So uh, this evening, four faculty members are joining me to deliver portions of this presentation. These fine educators are Mary Hambor, our school to career coordinator, Gusty Ferretti, math teacher and administrative intern, Catherine Ryan, math teacher and a former parent as well as middle school teacher, and Corey Millardo, a school counselor. At this time, I would like to thank the entire team at Valley, uh, especially the following educators who have worked diligently for the past few years, uh, and they are Lorraine Duffy, our counseling coordinator, Sarah McKinney, the other uh, third counselor, Maureen Vergolta, who's on the line tonight, English teacher, Dr. Bunley, our associate principal, Beth Nishan, English teacher and coordinator of the English department, Russ Aragoni, social studies, Eric Latronica, science, and JL Kopja, tech ed teacher and manufacturing teacher. Uh, it's also important to note and give a little shout out to uh, JL for how instrumental he's been in the layout and design process of our Pathways booklet and brochures. Uh, after tonight's presentation, we look forward to moving forward and beginning to roll it out. And that includes uh, a big print job. Uh, and we'll be getting those booklets to you. And I know you'll uh, recognize and uh, applaud the work of JL. And thank you, JL, very much. So at Valley Regional, we, our mission informs the decisions we make. An important aspect of our mission includes our core values and beliefs, which drives our work and states that all students will be inquiring, knowledgeable, and caring people who are willing to take academic risks and work both independently and collaboratively to meet the challenges that face them at personal, community, career, and global levels. This evening, we will provide the Board of Education and the public with a presentation that explains the rationale and benefits that lie ahead for each and every student at Valley with the implementation of a careers pathway model. The implementation of this career pathways model will provide advanced opportunities and pathways to success and beyond. So why implement career pathways? Actually, there are a number of reasons, but one very important one is to make sure we are preparing our students for success, especially as the demands of the workforce increase and so that our students are prepared to respond to continuous shifts and ever-changing needs of the global economy. This necessitates the need for students to have a high degree of career knowledge and problem-solving skills. As James and Ava mentioned, the Pathways experience is, is designed to guide students towards more meaningful capstone experiences and internships. Part of that process in the development of this initiative was meeting with and gathering student voice. As a comprehensive high school, it is our responsibility to make sure we are supporting all learners, and we are confident that the Career Pathways model will help every student personalize their learning experience and meet their post-secondary goals. It is also important to assist students and families by exposing them to various career options so that the, so, excuse me, so the expense of college or trade school is worth the investment. Through the Career Pathways program, students will be provided multiple opportunities to learn about themselves and their interests, which will increase motivation and their commitment to learn. Career Pathways provides a structure to personalize and integrate a collection of courses, programs, and services which are designed to maximize student interest. Career Pathways will help our students develop personalized learning plans that are aligned with their career interests, which will empower them to explore and develop skills needed for success in college and career. At this time, I have the pleasure of introducing our school to career coordinator who has been instrumental in moving this initiative forward. As you know, Mary has done a remarkable job developing a successful work-based internship and capstone pro program that is revered throughout the state. Please welcome Mary Hambor as she provides more information as it relates to the Career Pathways model and the integrated approach. Mary. Thank you, Mike. Um, I'm very happy to be here tonight. I've been an educator in the district for 30 years. Um, the first 14 as a special education teacher and most recently the past 16 years as the school to career coordinator. But throughout my entire tenure as a teacher, I've always really been passionate about making sure that our students have a meaningful game plan 
for when they walk across that graduation stage. And I've been really happy to be a part of that for this many years. Um, so the way I see the, the Career Pathways program is it really just provides a more formalized structure to what we already offer at Valley. It basically ties everything together. Um, for example, if we have a student who expresses an interest in a medical career starting in freshman year or as a freshman, we would encourage that student to join, you know, the, the health careers, health science and, and human services pathway. And then that student would be given direction to which academic courses to take, which elective courses to take, um, which of those classes might be offered for college credit called dual enrollment courses through either Middlesex or UConn. Um, that student would then be advised to join certain clubs like the Women in Science Club or the Health um, Occupation Students of America Club. And then when there's opportunities for guest speakers or career expos or internship opportunities, um, the school to career coordinator and the counselors would would know to single that student out and say, okay, here's this is for you. And so it would really just um, make everything more cohesive and allows the students to apply what they're learning in school to the real world. So I view this as a very exciting opportunity for our students. Um, the, the, this slide shows the 10 career pathways at Valley Regional High School um, that we've identified as fitting in best with the labor market trends and the offerings of our school. And the 10 pathways are um, the architecture and construction, STEM, the information technology pathway, health and human services, manufacturing, arts and communication, hospitality and tourism, government and law, business finance and marketing, education and training. And all the components in these pathways um, align with the VRHS core beliefs and values and the vision of the graduate. Um, you will read um, in, in later slides, um, some of the uh, student testimonials. And one of the things that was apparent to me was that many of these students um, recognized and realized their career passions when they were in their junior or senior year of high school. So the Pathways program is really designed to help students get a jump start on the path to their career. Um, so at this time, I'd like to introduce Gusty Ferretti, a math teacher, who will be speaking more about the Pathways themselves. Good evening. So the exposure to the pathways will be a comprehensive approach. We plan uh, in this initiative to highlight the opportunities that Valley has to offer, the academic classes, the electives, the club activities, and then really culminating in the capstone and internship opportunities. So in the next couple of slides, I'm going to lead you guys through um, a more deep a deeper look into what those pathways look like to students. So this is an example of the science, technology, engineering, and math, the STEM pathway. Um, this is an example of the brochure that will be available to par parents and students. Um, each of the pathways has a sample schedule, which you can see over on the left-hand side there. And then below that, there are some recommended pathway electives. On the opposite side, there are uh, the identified careers um, that are highlighted to tomorrow's world. Um, and then underneath that, the clubs and activities available at Valley currently, the internship, capstone experience, and local business opportunities. Um, that we have available uh, based on our wonderful relationships with the community and um, local businesses. Um, some of the activities that are highlighted in this, I know it's small for you to see, but some of the uh, activities that are highlighted within this um, pathway are uh, the Robotics Club, Health Occupation Students of America that Mary identified before. We have a cybersecurity club, a math club. Um, and then the internships, and I just mentioned are a testament to the partnership that we at Valley have with our community and our local businesses. 
and a few of the internship opportunities that students have utilized in the past that fit this pathway include internships at local architecture firms, engineering firms, insurance companies, and research labs. Um, I'm going to next highlight a few of the other pathways. And you should see, or, or you will see, the, the similarity in the structure here. Um, this is the manufacturing pathway. It has the same format. So again, we have a sample schedule over on the left, available electives already offered at Valley. Um, and then if you look up at the top right, the tomorrow careers section, this is a little bit different than the past slide, the, the slide prior to this in that um, the, the previous slide, I forgot to mention, but the previous slide had uh, mostly careers that were requiring graduate or undergraduate degrees. Um, and then if you look at this slide, we've identified careers that are um, that uh, start with on on job training or high school level education. And then to the right of that, there are apprenticeship apprenticeship positions. And then to the right of that, there are careers um, that require some college. Um, so just, you know, to highlight this, the pathways really are meant to serve every kid that are that's coming out of Valley. It's not just for the students who are planning on attending college. Um, again, and also some of the clubs and activities will be um, cross referenced when appropriate. So um, and then I forgot to mention there are also uh, student testimonials down on the lower left corner. Um, those are students who have gone through what would be a pathway, but it hadn't been identified yet. And um, these students have been in contact with us. Uh, we're lucky to have them um, give us some of their feedback. So the next slide, um, this is the arts and communication pathway. Um, Again, you'll notice in the upper right corner that the careers are split here by the level of education necessary for each of those career paths. Um, and, you know, clubs and activities recommended electives, next steps. Um, we plan on printing these pages. I believe I heard that JL had been at Essex Printing earlier today or this week uh, working on a deal with them. We also plan on making these documents interactive. Um, we know that the clubs and activities will change year to year based on um, faculty and other uh, in interested members of the community um, running clubs and activities, offering these clubs and activities. So uh, we plan on having these interactive and available on the Valley Reach 4 website. They will, uh, in those interactive documents, have links to all of our courses and activity descriptions, and also links to other resources regarding each of the careers that are listed. So uh, next, Catherine Ryan will be speaking to you guys about the implementation process. So how do we think we will implement the career pathways? Um, it will start with implementing a freshman academy. Promoting an academic mindset starts with belonging and feeling like work has a purpose and value. Our vision for a freshman academy is a curriculum that would be implemented throughout the freshman year to assist our students in developing a vision of themselves as a graduate and then helping them create a path towards that vision. Our freshman academy would expose our students to the pathway, pathways to course offerings and activities here at Valley in a thoughtful manner that will bridge the transition between their experience from middle school to becoming an independent learner by the end of high school. This program will help integrate our freshmen into the culture at Valley and would be delivered by the freshman core teachers. My background as a JW teacher, a parent of Valley J JW and Valley graduates, and now as a Valley teacher has given me the opportunity to see our transition process in action from its start in eighth grade all the way through the arrival of the students here at Valley. I firmly believe this freshman academy will reduce the stress of arriving at a new school and improve our students', students sense of belonging at Valley from the very start of their four years with us. This program will be able to lay the foundation for the three R's of engagement, relationships, relevance, and rigor. 
and this could successfully assimilate freshmen from a social, emotional, and academic perspective, enhancing the work that's already done by our counseling office. I'd like to introduce Corey Millardo from our counseling to continue. Good evening. As a representative of the school counseling department and also a parent of a high school student, I am so excited about this endeavor and how the career pathways will benefit our students. As a school counselor, we adhere to ASCA's national model, which guides the work that we do. An integral part of our mission is to include a developmentally appropriate curriculum focused on the mindsets and behaviors all students need for post-secondary readiness and success. The school counselors begin discussing post-secondary plans during our freshman transition meetings when the student first starts at Valley, and this work continues until their graduation. We utilize Naviance assessments, a four-year high school plan, and several meetings to determine future goals and how to assist the students in achieving these goals. The Career Pathways and Freshman Academy will serve to enhance the work that we do and create a team approach that will better serve our students. We wanna help our students prepare for their future by learning of the opportunities that exist and creating a track, track designed to educate both students both in and outside of the classroom. When I first started on this committee, I wondered if career pathways would, be, would pigeonhole students, but I've since learned that really it's just the opposite. It exposes students to career options so that they can be better prepared for their future. As a school counselor, there's so much that we would like to do with our students, but we are limited in time. So I speak for my whole department, the three of us, when I say that we are very excited to work collaboratively with the freshman core teachers to make career activities more meaningful. We want our students to leave Valley confident and secure in the knowledge that they are well equipped for the next steps in their lives, no matter what those steps may be. Mike? Thank you, Corey. So our next step, is really to share the career pathways with faculty, students, and parents, the final versions, um, conduct interest surveys to help students identify a po possible pathway, uh, engage our students in developing programs of study, determine a team of teachers to teach Freshman Academy, develop a continuum of learning for the Freshman Academy, and then obviously, as always, communicate the plan with stakeholders. So thank you for allowing us to present this initiative uh, this evening, and we hope you have learned more about the benefits uh, that it'll have with our students. And at this time, we'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you so much. What a, what a great presentation. Uh, John Stack, I see your hand is up. Go right ahead. <laughs> Muted, John. You're on mute, John. Still on mute. I'm, I'm sorry. I, we got you. So I, I just want to say this is really great. Thank you. Um, you know, somebody who's the recipient of your students out in the workplace, um, the more you can do earlier on to, to give kids relevant skills, right? And also cross-disciplinary, you take your man, I was trying to read those slides fast enough. You take your manufacturing and engineering, they're, they're almost versions of one another today. Um, so I encourage you to, to sort of cross-pollinate those groups as well. Yeah. Um, and that to, to encourage them to get that practical learning. The one thing, I, one question I've got is this whole program does it have any connection back into what I'll call some of their core study? In other words, you you sit there and you learn the rigors of math, but is there any connection to how that math then relates out to how it's used? It's almost like there's a there's a connection between the two that will help these career paths, I don't know, give more relevance to yep. some of the core the core uh, study programs that you've got or the core curriculum. Yeah, totally agree, John. Um, I, that that would be the next phase and something that we're going to pay close attention to and really uh, look at, at other models and how to do that effectively. Uh, one example I could talk to, and maybe Beth would want to take it over, but like English, for example, we have English 9, English 10, 11, 12. Uh, I look at especially 12th grade, that could be made up of two semester courses as opposed to a lockstep. English 12 with the same curriculum for every student. So as opposed to 
uh, you know, students, uh, you know, in the business pathway, taking a creative writing, maybe they take a technical writing or a business writing course. Uh, Beth, do you have any other thoughts about that? Um, I don't think I have much to add to what you just said. We talked about this obviously in a preliminary way, but um, I do think it would be interesting for us to offer more electives for our upperclassmen um, and possibly even find ways that it connects to career pathways while we're developing those plans. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Oh, great. Thanks, Ron. Great. Good luck with it. Dale, did you have something to add? If I could, um, I can speak to the manufacturing program and the uh, building construction program in terms of tying in a lot of the other um, skills that the students learn. Um, things like something as simple as squaring a property. So um, let's imagine a student out of high school before they go to college picks up a job at um, the, uh, the company that delivers your pre-built shed. I want to call it best built sheds. It's, a, it's here in Old Saybrook anyway. But to be able to go in and just square that up, we tie a lot of their math skills together, um, along with measuring skills that they learned in math and science classes um, in the manufacturing class. So in a lot of our more hands-on classes, we're doing our best to stay focused on drawing those connections in and making that math class not just a standalone class, but tying it together with what they might use in the future. Great. Rick? Can I also jump in because I am I, I'm a math teacher. Um, of course, I would love <laughs> to collaborate in any way to give my math students more authentic experiences. I've been able to, at the geometry level, um, create some authentic experiences in collaboration with the Stony Creek Quarry. But I've struck out locally with some of the higher level math classes. And so if you have any ideas, I would love to integrate some engineering um, tasks into Algebra 2 or, you know. Oh, I have lots of ideas. <laughs> I'll, I'll reach out to you, John, and we can. OK. Get if I could add to that, before the pandemic, um, there were some algebra classes that used to come down and we used to do a, um, a birdhouse activity, which I understand is extraordinarily stereotypical for a woodworking class. However, um, the students very rapidly discovered that the design that they created on paper was a little more challenged to, challenging to make when they were working with the actual materials. Something as simple as the walls are three quarters of an inch thick doesn't always come into their calculations when they decide that they're going to make a roof and well maybe the angles are a little bit off okay now there's a gap at the top how do we fix this those sort of things so it definitely drew that real world connection to um, the math and technology world great thanks everyone rick yeah i just had a question um i think it was just before covid started you used to have an, an annual um school to work fair um which had to be canceled are you planning on starting that up again or you know maybe for those students that don't know which direction they're going in to be able to see all the options absolutely so that's going to be a significant part of our work and and with the freshman academy we're going to have a group of dedicated teachers that could only get better over the years and perfect that work with those students but as far as that goes i see mary itching to well, no, I just we we'd love together. to bring it back. Um, some of us from the committee were working on it. We right. had a whole plan for, you know, that we were going to, was going to be April of 2020, and then it didn't happen. So, so if we were, if we are allowed to do something like that in the spring, pandemic wise, we would be all for it. And, and that would be the goal would be like to roll out the pathways, organize it by clusters. And, you know, so we would be very excited to do that if the, conditions of our health world allow, so. I, I guess just one other note, you've got a very healthy arts community around here. Um, so my guess is they will also lend, <laughs> that, that it's just very vibrant around here. So I absolutely offer you that as well. Jane? I just want to say, I think this is one of the most exciting initiatives I've heard about since being on the Board of Education. Um, it's really a way to engage, I think, all our students really and make them feel part of the school, no matter what their skill levels are. 
and really be, have, make education relevant. So thank you for doing this. Thank you, Jane. Hey, Lal. Lal, you're on mute. You Lal, we can't hear you. No, I know. That's probably Here a good are. thing. Um, <laughs> The, um, the th looking down the road with with all of these exciting possibilities, um, do you what do you see in terms of the impact on things like course offerings, staffing? Um, is this a, a, a are you looking at different ways to utilize current staff? Um, what kinds of uh, professional development do you see being tied into this? Um, you, you know, how, how much of a kind of a strategic plan have you put together to 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 fully implement this great great points lal uh yes no we, we are uh intentionally we wanted to really look internally and there's there's other pathways that uh that we could be offering but we really looked internally at what we do well already and like gusty had said it could be it could cross pathways different courses um but uh, of course professional development on how to make the learning more relevant um is going to be important there's going to be a lot more professional development in terms of that freshman academy and, and not only assisting with the middle school to high school transition but also assisting with all the the various tools that we do have at, at our uh, uh, within naviance and other pieces that we just don't effectively utilize right now because uh, of just time and resources, but having a dedicated team to assist the counselors, that's gonna be very important. I see some work uh, being, you know, really having to be uh, done with curriculum and looking at our current course offerings. And again, can things be turned into electives? Again, four years of English, do they need to be made up of four one credit courses or could it be broken up differently? Um, I think the flexibility and graduation requirements is certainly going to allow us to to move forward with the pathways program effectively. So I don't anticipate more resources except for high quality professional development and support from a community perspective at making sure that we have all the authentic opportunities to to move this forward with Mary and what she does with inviting the community in normally every year or sending our students out. Um, I really want to take this this experience, not only have it be in the classroom, but really have the students uh, earn credit while on while completing internships and independent studies too. So no, I don't think there's going to be a need for more resources at all. Uh, but definitely some curriculum work and professional development will be critical to make this happen. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Well, thanks everyone. We'll uh, we'll certainly get the uh, the booklets published and uh, printed, and make sure we get you all a copy. And then we'll work on uh, making it interactive, like Gusty said on the website. I think that's a uh, next level that'll make it really effective with the students and the parents. So thank you. And now I have the privilege of introducing Dr. Bunley. Oh, I'm sorry, Kate. Sorry, just just really fast. I, I wanted to say how impressive the presentation was and how much I appreciate what everybody in this group is doing and has done. And that, you know, I think it was 2015 when Capstone first came to Valley Regional High School and it had lift almost immediately. And I have just hats off to you guys. You really, I can feel the enthusiasm you have for it and the kids are really going to benefit. So thank you. Um, sorry to, to break your stride a little there. No, that's right. great. Um, no, thank you. That's and, it. and this team certainly thank deserves you. a lot of praise for their work and enthusiasm. So I thank the team.